my name is Jennifer Miller. I bought the drive-in in 1984. So I've owned it approximately 37 years. This is the best business to own to raise your children. I've got two great kids. They've worked it since they were five years old and they're in their 40s now. I love it. This has been my favorite job I've ever had. I've been here almost two years. Older people that have come to me and said, I used to work in a movie theater. It was one of the best times of my life, you know, and I go, I know exactly. And I mean, it's picking up the cigarette butts, it's picking up the trash, it's, you know, it's everything. Built in 1952. It's always been in operation, it's never been closed. Last year there wasn't anything new. So everything we played last year was old product. Like Back to the Future, the Flintstones, the Rascals, and all the families came in droves. Now that everything's back open again, they're not here. They're very picky on what they want to see now. But it was fun, I mean, it was, it was fun while it lasted. I found out yesterday at noon that I have two uh, bands playing out here before the show. So, you know, regardless of what goes on, every night we show a movie, I have to be out here cooking hamburgs and brats and hot dogs and getting everything around so that when uh, the crew comes in to start working, we're ready to go. But uh, you can see uh, the first band starting to set the stage up. That's uh, a little bit exciting. This is the first year that we've brought bands in from outside of the area. So deal working with a promoter. Yeah, 14 years of having parties in my backyard. It's a, it's a, it's a combination party carnival. My buddy says, hey, whatever happened to that drive-in idea? And I said, well, we shelved it. Uh, you know, it's got to be too expensive. Uh, the town was a little iffy about it. He goes, put it in your backyard. I said, Jarvis, I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna tell Donna. Jarvis says we had to put the drive-in in our backyard. She's gonna tell me to quit drinking and stop hanging out with you. That's true. And I said, two weeks later, she's gonna come to me and go, do you think we can do this? I I've had probably seven comments today. I like your shirt. Are you really? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, now that things are opening back up, I mean, the driving isn't the top of the choice anymore. It's it's in the middle, and you know, our our crowd is showing that. Two and a half, three hours from now, the first people start showing up. And when the kids get out of the car, look around, get the smile on their face, they get the frisbee or the football or the softball, baseball out, start throwing it around. And just, you know, you, you can't put a price on that. And you can't really explain that feeling. And then being a phys ed teacher on top of that, seeing people move around. <laughs> Um, is, is, you know, that, that's the best part. We opened May 13th this year, and the governor was here and helped cut the ribbon and stuff. And then Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night that week, we rolled into American Graffiti in Greece all weekend. And sad that Saturday night saw our first near capacity crowd of, we had 514 cars here for that night.
team get out of the starting blocks so that you could get anybody to talk to you about financing. You had to know way more about the business than one would think. That now that it's time to do it, you know, you've, you've taught, talked and coached somebody through it so many times. Part of what they were, they were trying to get us to quit is what they were doing. Um, it is a crazy idea, especially when we started this back in 2017 when we bought the property. Um, it was the dumbest thing anybody had ever heard of. What the hell is wrong with you? Why do you want to open a drive-in? And, you know, it's like trying to explain rock and roll to somebody that's never heard it before. They, uh, they started to get it after we, you know, put some plans together. You know, Jenny being an architect, things we knew going in that it would work. They all started to kind of figure out that, you know, we said we were going to do this and we we're going to do this. Um, and March of 2020, all of a sudden we were geniuses because everything had turned to drive-in. My typical job is I'm a healthcare architect. I design hospitals, clinics, but I love mid-century architecture. We live in a 1955 classic mid-century house and I really love the um, atomic era of the 50s and 60s, so space race, that kind of stuff. That's partly where our name came from, Quasar, the white light from a black hole with the middle vendor. And that was a piece I just really wanted to salvage. I was so jealous when I first saw it at the Boulevard Drive-In in Kansas City. And when I got my own, I was like, I'm designing around this piece. These screen pieces started life as 370-foot Selby screens at I-70. And we took them out when they closed. They got about a month's notice. Re-engineered and reassembled the pieces. It's already seen 80 mile an hour winds here. So and we haven't lost any panels out of it. Again, knock on wood. But uh, it's we've got enough pieces to duplicate that screen on the other corner of our property. All of the stainless, the Vittle vendor, and our Creators popcorn maker are all from the I-70. These were pieces of equipment that had been used for 40 years. I mean, there was so little we really had to do to any of this to get it to work. And it's it's just it's all a labor of love. I've got to block some space for friend's birthday tonight. I told him I'd hold some of the spaces in the middle for them. That's eight spaces. I promised him eight spaces. I should split them between rows though. I'll have to come back. Maybe I'll send Jay back to do that. The tower was restored at the end of last year. We finished it. It cost me a fortune. And it's beautiful. Do you see the other side? It's all silver. It's back to the original. Uh, uh, just before, when I asked you the last time, we were at 160 tickets, was that right? No, 116, or 135. 135. Oh, that was your prediction? Yeah, we should get to 160. About 100, he's thinking about 160, I'm hoping for more. You get a quick glimpse, but don't let anybody read it. <laughs> Those are all our notes. Fix and repair daily. I say to people, you know, it's a it's a 64-year-old physical plant. Not me, the driving. <laughs> Actually, it applies to both. <laughs> okay. Some of them still have this hard surface, and you'll see some out on the roadway here that are just precious. I need to get them restored. Um, it just it's a real project. The uh, you know, it boils down to everything else. You know, cost and you've got to weigh out what's important first to what, you know, what's next, etc. Thank you, you're all vaccinated, right? Yes. yes. You know, you don't have to tell me. You don't even have to tell me that. You know that. I'll, I'll proudly tell people. This happens very, very often. Uh oh, I didn't realize it. I got a sign repair, too. Evidently, that hit that on its way down. <laughs> so, do you see that great big sign? Do not enter if the boy, right? day or night. Do you know how many people do it anyway? It's, uh, no, it's silly, it's ridiculous. It's a very hard place to protect. These were my favorite. See these little things, they glow when they're done right, but they're blocked this way. Now all the paints come off, I have a chance of doing it again. But these all glow, it looks like a little flying saucer. 
All these LED lights and signs that move and you know have changeable copy, I'm not allowed to have a chaser. That's why I stabilized it and only use the outside or the, the middle row. But I'm thinking, what's the difference between that and an LED sign? So I might be able to. We've been doing more and more props this year than ever before, and it's really coming across very, very well. Like bowling balls, bowling pins, dude cookies. We have to have a dude-ish sweater just in case. I have to be really mindful about what candy I put in here because it's so hot, especially once we get to August that I can't really have anything that's chocolate, otherwise it will just melt. <laughs> this came with the drive-in. Um, it, it doesn't function, so it doesn't actually keep things warm, but we just use it for display. Uh, okay, what do I need to do? I need to get the bar. Um, I would probably start getting a bar. I'm getting a bar going. Dwight originally thought that a regular size Tic Tac is small enough, so why do we need mini Tic Tacs? And I said, because mini is just mini, and you can't help yourself. I mean, we also have mini Nutella. Like, who doesn't want a little tiny Tic Tac or a little tiny Nutella? But this is gonna be the big seller tonight. I know, we've got our shortbread cookies. We do custom ones for some of our films, and they always sell out really fast. Dedication to your your craft. Yeah, now I just need to gotta get the those two items there. And we need them. Alright. So uh, this area here at the Greenville Drive in is known as the Projectionist Club. Um, it's kind of the licensed area that's attached to the concession area um, and one of the things that we're known for is our cocktails uh, tonight because it's the Big Lebowski the ephemeral cocktail is the White Russian of course people do find it a little unusual that they can come to a drive-in movie theater and get a cocktail and it pleases me that people are confused by that <laughs> We basically throw a movie party every night. The majority of the movies that are shown here are movies that people have seen numerous times uh, and really get into the spirit of it. We obviously encourage people um, and we love it because we have random people who just show up dressed in the attire from the movie. One of Lee's top favorite stories from running the drive-in for the last seven years, she came in here like she just has now to the bar. <laughs> I was making a drink and I looked across the bar and there was a duck sitting on one of our tables. And I said, oh, that's just Gary. <laughs> See, you spoiled the joke. I had invited Gary to you come. You spoiled the joke. <laughs> let me, can I do that one again? Because she jumped in too fast. Okay, well, let me take your sticker off of your glasses. Okay. <laughs> Which I guess I'm okay. going to have to redo the whole thing because no. I have the stickers on, but then it was kind of funny. <laughs> Wait till you see me when this place fills up. Okay. <laughs> it totally changes. It has to sometimes. There's a lot of people here. Like when we have 900 cars, if it's three to four pe person per car, that's a lot of people in here. We have a brand new movie for a change. We have The Fast and Furious. Usually we'd show double features. We're understaffed, so we can't do double features right now. It's been really hard with staff. Staffing has been probably our number one problem. Last week I think I ended up doing 53, 54. And then some of my staff are doing 45 to 50 hours, and they're still teenagers. They're 16 to 18 years old doing that. I felt really bad during the winter this year. We have kids that work in 40 and 45 hours a week that 
really needed to be concentrating on school and doing their homework and stuff like that because school had changed for them even. And they would be wanting to come here and give us, but then I'd hear things like, well, I'm failing this class and I'm failing that class. Oh, and it just hurts me so bad to know that, that they're falling behind and what's more important for them at this age. Some of our staff went through depression. You saw that too because of COVID being locked up in their home for so long. You see it out here with our customers too. You see a more aggressive customer. It brings it out in people. When they finally get out here and get loose, they're still a little aggressive for being locked up all the time. Yeah, that, that was actually really scary for a little while. We would normally expect probably two to three hundred cars today if it hadn't rained and had uh, severe thunderstorms an hour before opening. We'll probably only have around 50 cars. So I scaled back to uh, two cashiers, two people in the kitchen. Uh, it's not going to be a great night tonight. So after we were open for a couple of months, I uh, had to go and increase all the prices because of the uh, inflationary situation. Supplies, uh, candy, popcorn cups, um, even our Pepsi supplier has problems bringing in some of our syrup. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> well, the, the, the pandemic made everything twice as hard and it's gotten much easier this year than it was last year from a pandemic standpoint. Um, we don't have to wear face masks if you're fully vaccinated. We, we don't have to have 50% uh, capacity. But then there's other, th other problems. Staffing has been extremely difficult. There's a lot of people that were laid off and they're just not ready to go back to uh, the workplace. I've never had so many people uh, do the um, no show, no call. Just kind of vanish off, you know, as, as though Thanos snapped his fingers and they disappeared into the ether. Um, Never had that happen before. I've had more of those this year than in the past 30 years combined. You know, we're still in the midst of this period of uncertainty. Day and date streaming with new movies, is, is that going to be a permanent thing? I, I hope it isn't. 2022 is a different year. I think that the studios will be reevaluating their first run business models. And they'll, they'll have to decide you know, how much of a priority is the theater going experience. I started in 1987, uh, became one of the owners in 1997, so I've been here for 34 years. First couple of summers it was in between college and, and the Marine Corps. With COVID we had a little bit of consistency which is good because you, you knew you were capped out at, at uh, 300 cars and we knew that like everyone wanted to come and get out of the house. This summer it's kind of been back to, they have to have a real reason to get out and, and come. As you can see it's splotchy, you're, you're literally from within our own field it's, it's worse six and better <laughs> so um, let's see how, how, the, how the fog works in this area You're sometimes <laughs> we are somewhat prone to fog here in Wellfleet it's the F word in fact no one's allowed to say it I just broke my own rule you can say fog <laughs> is uh, various alternate names to it it's not bad to the point where it would affect the show at, at this moment, but um, the fact that it's only uh, 5.52 uh, could mean it could get progressively worse. If you're seeing Jaws, you know, it adds, adds to the effect, <laughs> the real special effects, I guess you could say. But the ocean is right down there and it's so foggy we can't see down to see the ocean. So it is pretty bad here, and this would severely affect the movie if this made it all the way in. And in this case, rain would actually, a little bit of rain would be preferred because it would wipe out the, the fog. That has the better part of Massachusetts except Cape Cod. And it's marching a little north, so I, I don't think we're gonna get any rain tonight. We're right here. So. Hopefully it doesn't get much worse. <laughs> oh, 
Hi everyone, this is Ben coming to you live here at the Harvest Moon. As you can see, our weather right now is actually uh, pretty fantastic. We have a light breeze. It is nice and blue skies out here. We did get drenched here a little earlier. However, it looks like most of those have gone through now. It should be a really nice night for driving movies. So. It's also our final night for showing F9 The Fast Saga in the primary movie slot. So if you guys want to see that during regular prime time, you definitely want to come out and join us tonight over on screen two with Vin Diesel and the gang. <laughs> Jeez. It's, not, it's not a great one. The drive-in isn't as big as ones I've been to in the past. There is a train that goes by at 945 directly behind the screen too. So we missed part of the film. I would suggest the management that you coordinate intermission with the train. I know. We do this like every time now. That keeps you in there. Yeah, she don't fall out. Yeah, we gotta take it apart and try and fix it. Yep, it doesn't work this year. So I wanna get a hold of the railroad so we can coordinate that as soon as possible <laughs> so we can resolve that issue. This will be the third generation of our family in the business when she gets older. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Dad can't wait till you're old enough to go. One less thing I have to do. <laughs> Did I get it? You your truck here with Ben? Yeah. Okay, you leave yeah. your truck here with Uncle Ben. You can get it when you come back, all right? I'll be back in a little bit. It's our first customers. Hello. Hello. You have pre sale tickets or you need tickets? Uh, no. Okay. Alright, you're going to be on screen one tonight, which is the one in front of you. It's 91.3 FM for the radio station. Okay. Our main snack bar is open, it's the big building in the middle. Um, two cars between the poles when you park. That wasn't so bad. Nope. Now we wait. It opened in 2003, but me and him did most of the building. It was really bad. I got to put the whole floor in the projection booth. The biggest problem now is having employees, people to help. I mean, we're so short-handed now, it's like barely getting by. We used to have enough to run two separate concession stands and have every single box office open, and now it's just trying to keep enough to keep a concession stand open. Luckily now they're old enough they can just take over everything for us. You're a lot nicer than I am. So. <laughs> the managers are uh, the kids. I love them. They're like, really chill people and I love working with people here as well because I've made a lot of friends. There was a new concession stand in the works. A new marquee was in the works. A lot of things were in the works and then COVID happened and now nothing's in the works. <laughs> we're just trying to keep Keep heads above water and keep rolling right now. The theater was put up in 1957. It was a single screen, 1200 car theater. And then uh, when the suburban multiplexes started opening, they decided that they would turn this into a fourplex so that they could play more movies, you know, for the, for the customer base. We're very fortunate in this COVID-19 issue to have been, for the most part, permitted to continue to operate. There are folks who are in a hurry, they want that best spot, you know. We're gonna have to bring you in over here, all right? Yeah, I'll get him, I'll get him. Okay. So we do have some rules that have changed. Anytime you exit your vehicle, please wear a mask. Don't okay. sit up chairs or sit outside the vehicle. And please park one face away from everybody else, please. All right, thank you. You're gonna be in screen number one and it's 106.9 FM. We had a lot of uh, new customers and they were unused to driving. And everything has to be explained to them. 
and it slows down the box office. So I'm there to keep it moving, keep it moving. Quite a reputation, good or bad. I mean, most people, depends on what side you're on. Uh, I have those who love me for having rules, and I have those who say I shouldn't have any at all. And to those people, I say, if you, you, if you think that, don't come here. You know, because I'm not going to run a free-for-all. I refuse. But I've actually gotten compliments about having rules, that, that at least it establishes boundaries so that you don't have patrons arguing with each other. You know? They were very grateful last year just for me to be open. Um, and that was a challenge because we were greatly reduced in capacity. And then I had that other problem is like, you know, I even had somebody say to me, believe it or not, B, why are you playing those old movies? And I was like, well, what is it that you think I could play? Because they're not releasing anything. And then it was like, oh yeah. <laughs> I used to have, and I need to get them. We didn't use them last year, we didn't need to. Little blinkers, so that it calls your attention to that. You see, as they go. And, and some are very diligent about it, the other ones are just total disregard. It's right in front of their eyes and they could care less. It, it, it means everybody in the world but me. Movies used to mean something, and people used to anticipate their release, and there was something called showmanship. When you attended a theater, and uh, you're not gonna get that on your TV at home. And I don't care what unit you bought or what you did, you're not gonna have the same thing. Uh, will it survive? I don't know. I really don't. I think drive-ins have a better chance just because it's you know, a venue and it's an experience all by itself with or without the movie. But I worry for the indoor, I do. It just hit me and I just realized that the S is third long. You see it? I tell you, it's funny too because the man who did this is pretty professional. But yeah, that's upside down. <laughs> okay, we go to the other side and see. See, you can't pick up and discharge people on the roadway, so I don't know what's going on. I guess she's not. Oh, she's gonna go ride with them, maybe. I don't know where to go. These people are pulling over to cover their lights. Then you don't drop the hood. <laughs> Look it up. All right, and if you have trouble, see if you get a hot shot or whatever. We do rent radios, but if you can use that, do it. Sean. What time do I start the, the, the countdown? Okay, 10 4. Favorite part? Right there. Can't go across the so we can give ourselves you got, more. You got more extension boards? Yeah. Every day a new adventure. Empty a trash can up here? Yeah. I'm not strong enough to do it by myself. You guys play. 
both kinds of music, right? right. Country and Western. That's right. Okay. That's right. Do you have any idea what movie I just quoted? No. Move it back. They love the drive-in because it's, they can come as they are, and they can bring chairs and tables, and set up a camp, I always call it, if they get it early enough. And Sometimes there'll be four or five cars that come together and then they, they stay a while before we start the movie and it's just great. We see, you know, we've had proposals out here and, and people walk up and down with their dogs and they hold hands. It's really a lovely place. And it's romantic. The drive-in's very romantic. There's a few locals that come every week, but most of our customers are Tourists and probably, I don't know, 50% each night are new newbies that come to see us. Pandemic brought out, I don't know if it brought out new people, it's just because they couldn't go to the theater, the walk in, the hard top they call them. Um, they couldn't go to restaurants, they couldn't go to any. The kids were stuck at home, and so this was a you know, you keep your distance. And they came to the drive-in. Yes, and that's the only real more showing. <laughs> we just got that one screen. So. Well, we've got uh, a few more cars than last night. Uh, of course, that's par for the course. Saturdays are usually a little bit better than Fridays. Large nacho, extra cheese, yes. and uh, hamburger with cheese. <laughs> Uh-huh, y'all enjoy the movie. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Three cheeseburgers, three drinks, and two candies. Oh, water too. Do you take cards? Yes, ma'am. They do work fairly well. And they'll last up to two weeks. I usually, when I wear one, I put it on my hand. It's sad. And it'll come back. You know, we just don't know when. You know, another generation probably will come back. You know how the wheel turns, so you slow, it comes back around. We're just coming into our third calendar month. We started May 13th, so um, just a little over a month and a, and a half under our belt. We keep getting continually newer cra new crowds every time. It's teaching a lot of people how to use a drive-in because actually we here in Nebraska haven't had, in Omaha, haven't had a drive-in since 2006. So there's a lot of young kids who haven't ever been to the drive-in. Most of the equipment that's manufactured for outdoor theater projection is made to go into an existing drive-in. Those were always um, three-phase power. It was gonna be about $30,000 to get it to our curb, and we've gotta get it from the property line to the middle of, of the property for the building. So that expense, we took and rolled into a laser projector that runs off of single-phase 220. It plugs in like your clothes dryer. I was down by the lower left, and I took a kind of nice little artistically framed photo with the trees in the side, and Jenny accused me of Photoshopping it. We've had a lot of friends through the process, everybody from, you know, Rick Cohen and Dee uh, Vogel and the, the Neils out of Kansas City, 
but one of the, the things that sticks with me, Rick helped me out with some vintage blueprints for Selby foundations because we had to engineer foundations from scratch. I think he's put a couple of Selby's up uh, out of transit. I did have an inkling that you know they had kind of a canoe shape. I didn't have any figures. I didn't have anything engineering wise. And Rick had a set of prints that had the data on it that we needed to extrapolate. But I asked him, I said, Rick, is there anything I can give you for these prints? And he says, you know what? Just build a good drive-in. Now because of the weather, most people made their, their, their decision that the drive-in wasn't going to be open tonight or they weren't going to come out to the drive-in tonight, they weren't going to risk it. So we opened the gate at 8 o'clock and of course it's not raining at all. It may not rain at all for the rest of the night, but the damage is already done. It's going to be pretty dead. Basically wait around for the movies to start and get off lights. The uh, segues came about, uh, we were promoting the Paul Blart 2 movie, Mall Cop 2, it came out in 2015, so I borrowed a segue, and I, I did a cosplay, and I, I dressed up as Paul Blart, and now we're up to four segues, and uh, our staff is on them, and we really uh, come in handy with helping people to get their lights off during the movies. I started working here when I was 15, in the concession stand. And through the years, I moved up to cashiering, projection, and when I was 19 years old, I took over as manager. So I've been managing the drive-in theater for over 30 years. And what I like most about it is probably just seeing all the families coming together and having a good time and uh, having a shared experience doing something that's unique. Now we'd like to have the drive-in theater here for another 60 years. Just we'll see how things uh, work out with Hollywood. The uh, thunderstorm watch is in effect until 11 p.m. tonight, so a lot of people are just not going to risk it. We'll be lucky to have 20 or 30 cars. Maybe um, you know next week will be better, but it's supposed to be thunderstorms all week. This is the fourth week in a row that there's been thunderstorms literally, you know, if not every day, then every other day. Do you guys have a reservation? We do, no. No, no problem, we've got plenty of spots. Okay. Um, had you been here before? No. 88.7. Dwight will put it up on the screen so you just tune into your radio. We have also radios you can borrow for a buck inside. Beer Garden is open. He's making white Russians. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. You guys have a great time. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Hello, hello. Do you guys have a reservation tonight? No. No problem. Um, two? Yep. Bars open. Ice cream sandwiches. I made them last night so they are fresh and ready to go for awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you so much. You probably know what our beer garden special is tonight. Oh you bet. I my robe. Wave number one. <laughs> Bitter gods are with you. I mean, for us it's been nice, like we, in terms of like last season, we had a season, but for, so like, but for these, for other businesses, we lost all of last season and then to have the rain this season. Is true. This is our seventh season. So the drive-in itself has been around since 1959. Um, but this is, for us, 
E7. Um, the other reason you need to remember E7 is if you want a warm chocolate chip cookie delivered to your car during the movie. We have a friend um, who made these for me because I found that people, when I tried to explain to them next to the pole, they still wouldn't park with enough room for another car. So we made these little dioramas so that it could be really clear <laughs> to everybody, you know, what the expectation was, right? So we have, we actually have two versions. We also have a version with a pickup truck so that they can see it's okay to put your pickup truck the other way around and sit in the back if you want. I have a couple of local friends in the community who help me out with the box office and sometimes some of the youth who work here will do the box office, but I like it because it gives me a chance to see everybody. I at least get to say hello to everyone. So, not everyone goes to the beer garden, but everyone comes through here. It was funny, I like pulled the 7 and 7 out on kind of a whim for airplane, and then I discovered I really was enjoying it as like my summer drink, so I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to put it back on the menu. Like everyone, we're experiencing uh, hiring challenges and the supply chain challenges have been real. I've never seen anything like this. We're basic things. We're still in a weird situation. You know, it's 2021 and things are not totally back to normal. I think everyone, everyone knows that. Um, it's nice to feel like you're getting there. But uh, it could be the worst July attendance-wise on record, but that could flip. We'll see where it goes. <laughs> um, Customers really like them. They are a pain. <laughs> and we try to maintain every spot to have have it. Uh, we're running into some underground wiring problems. Um, so some rows are weaker than others. This is our speaker shop. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have a uh, RCA uh, former technician. He uh, repairs the speakers for us. These were pulled out of a drive-in in the 80s and have not been rebuilt yet to be put in service here. Hopefully. We obviously want to use as little of those as possible every year. And this is one that's obviously damaged beyond repair. I run run over. If if the underground wiring problem is not localized to the speaker pole area, it's a tough to justify digging up the pavement. So Alright, this is our nineteen fifty seven projection booth. One of two original nineteen fifty seven RCA nine arc. Also it's a rebranded Ashcraft Super Core Light Carbon Arc Projector Setup with Century Heads. Um, this was in use right through this end of the summer season in 2012. We actually um, have a 133 lens and we would run the film at Dancing Hot Dog and the Welcome to the Show in 133 as it was originally produced, which you know was the TV what is now known as a TV aspect ratio, or the, the older TV aspect ratio. And this is the motor generator control. We can fire the carbon arc by either the motor generator or those rectifiers. That's our field speaker switching thing, the original 1957. for 11 is bad going out there, so we, out in the field, we've got it sliced on, I think, about 12. This is the Barco 32V, which I'm sure you've seen in many other drive-ins. And that's a sound rack, broadcast warehouse transmitter. My father owned and operated several movie theaters and he was able to redo enough stuff here by used equipment to reopen the drive-in June 16th, 1989. And ever since then, we've been operating the drive-in here. 36, about 40 people tonight. That's what they had last night, 40 some people. And we usually get half of that in cash sales, so. I know, you got another truck. This is a new one. Where'd you pick this one up? Okay, you can have it back. Yeah. Some random night I got a friend request from him and literally five blocks away from home and there he was. I think the third day mm -hmm. I brought her here. I don't remember what movie it was. I think it was The Jungle Book. I think so too. Yeah, Jungle Book when that came out in live action. Mm -hmm. 
two years later, he asked me to marry him. A year and a half later, we got married in October. They closed, and then a weekend later, we got married, and it was great. And, and mean, then we start off our first year of marriage right into the COVID catastrophe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of... Uh, combined here yeah you move from okay cool you run a drive-in and yeah. now she uh, wants to go visit every drive -in. yes I would really love to go see a lot of the drive-ins it's just one of those things that just makes you feel really good like you are actually doing something good in the community or just in general that people are actually expressing it to you and you know people don't really do that the, a lot the highs we did get last year mm -hmm. with COVID because people were appreciative of having something to go do yeah Horse greens, uh, we have a bar, a snow cone trailer, frozen margaritas, we have beer. We don't have any liquor. We also have a concessions. We have four box office lines that run the vehicles in. Normally we'll have a caboose out here that has our merchandise in it. Yard games, couches, everything so you can sit outside and enjoy the movie from outside the pavilion. Then we have a beer garden, which is very popular on Friday and Saturdays. We got a little bit of popcorn candy. Cotton candy that we make here daily. Cheeseburgers, bacon cheeseburgers, hot dogs, corn dogs, pizzas, nachos. Uh, yeah, we want, and, uh, and I make a pulled pork barbecue now too that's really good here. Nacho chips were hard to keep up with this year. Some of the styrofoam and things like that were pretty easy. We would have to change what we could get them. We couldn't use the ones we normally had, so but we could still get those. There was a time period where this year where we couldn't get popcorn boxes. We had to actually drive to Arlington and find a different style of popcorn box, which is really, really weird. This is our uh, delivery system back here. When the order first comes in, let me show you. You confirm. And then they'll they'll put the order together, then grab the food right out of the kitchen, which is directly right here beside it. And you can just order, make the order on your phone. And then somewhere around 15 to 20 minutes later, we'll bring the food up to your vehicle. Two. You just take it, yep. Grab the popcorn, cheeseburger, hot dog. When we first opened, it was insane. There was a huge volume coming in. Somewhere we're in between 100 to 200 tickets to where now, now it's somewhere between 30 to 50 tickets. There you go, perfect. And then right now on a slower volume night, like tonight, I won't even staff my runner position or my filler position, managers, Different kids like that will kind of help me out on it. We'll actually have my grounds crew, which we'll call them on the radio, to come run the orders. Are you going to run them? Yep. Okay. Okay. Sometimes the we'll go out to do the delivery, and there'll be nobody in that spot, and so we can actually call the phone number on the uh, ticket or look in the tablet, call it, and most of the time the customer is giving you the wrong spot number. One C twenty eight. Awesome. Okay. Twenty eight. Thank you All very right. much. Well, we're 15 minutes to showtime, and Thursday night, pretty good crowd. Uh, the horror movies are filling up, and the family movies, it's not quite a family night. I think we're gonna be pretty good getting a nice house and getting the movie starting on time uh, without too many stragglers coming in after the movie starts. I grew up outside of Philadelphia, and we had four drive-ins within a half an hour of where I lived. Uh, they were all big single-screen drive-ins, you know, 100-foot screens, and the bulk of the audience was in my age cohort. They were teenagers. Uh, and then uh, by the time I got into college in the late 60s and 70s, that's when the drive-ins started, you know, disappearing. Shopping centers would be put up, uh, other kinds of business venues would be put up, and 
the owners of the old drive-in lots would, would get out of the business. We've stayed in by multiplexing and, uh, and being able to show, you know, eight movies a night, uh, which helps you stay in business. So we have 21 screens now across uh, six venues, uh, San Diego, Riverside, uh, here in Montclair, uh, Theater in Salt Lake City, and another one in Atlanta, Georgia. Last year, during the height of the pandemic, we were running side by side, streaming it on the screen. Well, now they've decided if we're going to stream it, we can't let it go on the drive-in screen. Well, why not? All it's going to do is sell their product even more. We look ahead and like, oh great, it's finally going to break loose. We're getting ready to roll again. And next thing you know, they say, well, we're going straight to video with this one. Now, Fast and Furious is doing quite well. This is the first busy weekend we've had since COVID started. If it wasn't for F9, we wouldn't be this busy. I mean, we'd, there'd hardly be anybody out here. The F9 is actually what's bringing them in. And I'm hoping next weekend's a good weekend as well, but without rain. Still fit? Kind of, just this finger. Should we see if Dad still fits too? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's got some sweat equity out here already at six that uh, that a lot of kids don't have in in the family business. So. That's Thanks fun. for the footprints. <laughs> Walk all over me. <laughs> You're Jason, you're scary. This is our boy Wes, he's our youngest, and his namesake is down in Kansas City, um, Wes Neal, who's the kind of the patriarch of the Boulevard Drive-In. Hey Wes, I mean Jason. Yes, we're gonna take the spaceship and then we're gonna build it. I got a lot of pre-show content that I put up that really is so washed out you can't see it, but it's something to put over the air and let people know they're tuned into the right channel. We've got a runway. That was always one of the things I thought was so cool about indoor theaters when I was a kid were the lighted strips in the floor along the center path. And we've got a runway path to the base of the screen, which beckons them and leads them right up to the, the snack bar where we can feed them or they can get you know to the bathroom or whatever. So uh, I love to see people interact with what we made. It's just such a compliment to hear them say um, that it was so nicely designed and planned because it really was. I went through and I took aerial shots of over 50 drive-ins about how they were laid out, um, how close they were to the highway, their queuing distances, every little thing. We spent two years planning and going over that with government entities and everything. I mean, we really put the research into it and I think it paid off. Is this, uh, is this the DeGeorge party coming in, these, these slam short boxes? You are correct, sir. Ooh, all right. Well, I'll lead them to their way and we'll uh, get them parked.
the wind's just the wrong direction tonight. <laughs> a lot worse with, with the, uh, as we call it, the, the F word. We're not allowed to say it. I've seen a lot worse with the odd. I've seen it where I can't see the screen and I can't see the marquee. I can see both, so as long as it doesn't get too much worse, I think we'll be okay. Well, you never know. It could get worse in five minutes and then it could totally clear out. I've had that happen. Where it's totally the point you can't see the movie and ten minutes later it's clear as day. I saw Back to the Future here when I first got my license. I saw all the classics here from um, Star Wars onward, E.T., uh, before I even worked here. Started the summer of 87 in that ticket booth, main one, six nights a week as a second job. <laughs> Which, you know, <laughs> a lot of kids these days could learn something from that. <laughs> This probably would have been a 300 car night. You know, some customers are deterred by it. So I think we have, actually you can look at the old school counter. We only have 117 in so far, and that is slow for a Saturday. Especially when we have the staff for, for 300 or so. You know, it's one thing to be expected, but. Yeah, so we'll see. Um, I'm going to wait. It wasn't automatically programmed to start at 8.20. I pulled it off the automatic program, and I'm going to manually start it when I think it's really dark, so that it's um, hopefully going to be a decent picture. It's Space Jam, which I guess is bright. So we'll see. <laughs> I, I used to wake up in 1988 when I bought the drive-in, 89, 90, I'd wake up every morning and say, what, what do I have to do today? And then you get it in there and then you get into your 20th year, I'm, I'm in the 34 now. And then you get into, what the hell's gonna happen to me today? What's gonna break? Who's not gonna show up? Uh, but it's still, how do I say that? Uh, high energy, you know, it, 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 you, you have to be a little bit of high energy to deal with it and, um, and you, have to look at whatever happens. It's, it's one of my favorite sayings, and the, the boy, uh, Sean and Ken both know this. I come in to do one thing, and I never get to it because of everything that might, you know, show up in the interim. The most favorite is show start. It's got to be. And even even on the nights we're not operating, uh, even in the winter, because well, I'm here just about every day, truly. Uh, sunset. And you see that shadow cast upon the screen is kind of a blue just before it turns a little darker gray. And it's ready to receive light. And being able to start the show, do a good presentation, that part never gets old. And, it, and I always feed on it. Folks, this is a comprehensive list of all of our household policies. But it's a mighty good start. We refer you to the flyer that you received when you came in tonight, where all of our household and policies are written. It doesn't take Yeah, we missed him. He has been on the radio you know for he months. He has not been here doing that. So please, know what the households are in them. Sometimes Deal say the one he should have saved was the gateway. I don't know. I never saw the gateway, but if you're too no. below six point nine on your FM, that I'm sorry, one needed to be saved. Yeah. 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 Training your car battery on the biggest movie theater screen in the U.S.
everybody I've talked to is cool with this. They're going, yeah, it might not be our music, but it's still live and it's cool. I'm like, okay. Trying to, we're, we're trying different things and I don't always know what I'm getting. <laughs> I'm gonna go do some Facebook Live. You wanna come with me? What? Do Facebook Live? No. Yeah, I saw lightning to the north. It's to the north and the south. So is it going to hit us before an mission or? No. Look, right in the middle. Good. I'm going right in the pocket. Please turn your headlights out as soon as you get parked and have a great night. Thank you. So far it's missing us. I've been seeing lightning. Yeah, you see it in the distance. A car that came in a few minutes ago said that it was raining like crazy over Pax. I believe it. I think that's one of the red dots. I learned how to shut off uh, 2021 Hyundai Sonata lights today. We used the old fashioned handbrake trick. They were trying everything like, well, you can tape up the lights if you want. I'm like, well, see if you can figure something out. And then on my way back, I Googled it. I'm like, oh, that's easy. Went back out. Hey, pull this lever. Voila, lights out. <laughs> no, it's intermission. It's nine twenty-four. Got it. Uh, that can't be. That can't be the same. That can't be the same train then. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Because oh, yeah. he's already it's blown his whistle, so he's got to be down here. <laughs> so he's got to be going this way. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> it was nine forty-five. Yeah. So it was this, this one. This one's going south. Stop it! Right in the middle of this action scene. <laughs> You just gotta base it on the train now, I guess. You don't, you don't get to go off when the movie. Like, it's been 10 minutes since it's been on. I don't care, the train's going by right now. I do take it personal. Well, yes. think of all the positive people, and then you get that negative, like, 5% out of that 100% yep. of positive. So. And he's not going very fast either. I like watching the train. I don't know what they're talking about. That's why I cut those trees down, so people could watch the train. I think it is harder to run and drive it now. It's more complicated. There's more people you have to please. And uh, it just is, yeah. And I drove up today and there wasn't any line. Of course, you know, I got here half an hour after they opened, but even so in the old days, that line would be continuous. And it's so cool because you see all the, the, the headlights of the cars waiting in line and they're pulled over to the side. And those days, those things I haven't been around for a while. I just haven't, you know. Jennifer, I have a guy that wants to buy that poster. He wants to pay for it now. And I told him $5. Is that all right? 
but it'll be three weeks. That's what I told it. Well, maybe, 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 maybe. maybe. Boys are looking at that movie out there to see if it's on the screen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lordy. Just have it. We used to have 35 millimeter in that. I always thought I would have gonna miss that a lot, but I really don't now. You know, I do miss that kick, 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 kick. Give him that tonight even. If he pays for it, just let him have it tonight. Oh, okay. Because I, I got another poster. Another bed of boxing. And boxing, yeah. But that, what if it's not? Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the movie. We have a window from the concession that looks in there that we could always keep an eye on the 35mm. But now we can look at the computer screen and see how long the movie is before it's over. So it's pretty nice. We, we do like that a lot better. Yeah, overall it, it is better, but you know, it was sad to see 35 millimeter though. I would love it when they want jalapenos on, on the nachos because I really load it on. We used to only have one size. We had the smaller boats for the hot dogs. So when we ran out of the large boats one night, we said, well, we're just going to have to sell smalls. And so that's how we came up with two sizes. And that's only happened like two years ago. And I've had this place for 37 years. So trial and error, I've learned a lot. Do you need a little tray or you think you got it? I've used the expression before about some of my employees. And I love them. I love them. But if, if I tried to run them off, they wouldn't leave because they love it, the drive-in. And it... Excuse me, but it's their bullshit too because they'll they'll go home and talk to their parents about it, how many people were here, or something that happened that night, or uh, and or go to their other job and talk to them, and then they'll they'll have a friend that says, "Oh, I want to work there," so then we'll hire their friend to come and work. And that's usually how we hire everyone is somebody knows somebody else that wants to work. It's not running an ad or you know advertising at all. I should have said twenty. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And then we could have split it all in kids. Oh, we could. <laughs> I'll tell him and see what he says. He said it was like anything. He wanted it that bad. I would not do that. I think he snuck in. He said he didn't even get a full screen too. He's headed that way. Yeah, he came in the exit. Yeah. <laughs> it's different every day. You never know what to expect. I just get tired of some of the surprises. <laughs> yeah, some of the surprises are not really good. I mean, it's yeah. a really good business for an ADD person because I don't like focusing on one thing. I keep many things going in my life at all times and the driving is different every single day, but there's just some things that become more than you can bear. And, and people are destructive. I mean, literally destructive. I mean, they'll go in there, they'll rig the toilets to where they're constantly running. They'll, they steal the tank lids off of the toilets. They steal the toilet paper. They steal paper towels. They steal the soap. I mean, you know, and it, we've been dealing with this ever since we opened. I mean, you know, it's just been a continuous thing. Uh, behind the cooler on the other side of the wall, turn the valve off right there. Okay, gotcha. We'll have to call the service guy. He told me not to be messing with his machine, so I can't do that. One thing a lot of people don't know is every screen here is different, but everyone has a different reason for being built. Everyone was actually almost a copy from my mind of one of my favorite drive-ins that I had been to at some point in life. I tore down a lot of drive-ins. I started back in the 80s and worked with a theater company out of North Carolina and I tore down a lot of drive-ins. I destroyed a lot, but that was my job at the time. There were things that I hated to see go. There were things that I kept from those drive-ins and some of them are implemented here. I'm the only one that even knows it. Nobody even knows what I did. And I can look at it and I'm like, oh, this come from there, this come from here, this come from here. But nobody else even knows or cares because the the property is so long gone, you know, it has industrial parks or strip malls or different things built on top of them now 
and nobody would ever know. It's just all stuck in my head. When I'm gone, it's gone. So many people are immigrating to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and you know we are very diverse, and we have met so many great people from around the world that we would never do if it weren't for this location right here. DCP last night. One of the reasons why I like showing the older movies is because we have redundancy. So we're going to start off the DCP and we'll see if it works. If it doesn't, we'll switch it to the Blu ray. Please be sure to tune your radio to 88.7 FM. That's 88.7 FM. Those without a radio, please visit the concession building and pick up a portable radio. Don't forget, It's just been really different. Like, we were just talking about this the other day, about the first few years we were open. Maybe once a year we'd have some type of negative interaction with a customer, but this year it's every weekend. Anytime you try to approach a customer on any rules that may be being broken or just any type of situation where maybe parking a vehicle in the wrong spot, they're very aggressive to come back and attack you like you're doing something wrong with them. During COVID was the worst with the masks. I mean, even if you would just ask a person to pull their mask up or have their mask on, they would curse, scream at our, some of my staff, 15 years old, and they're up there getting cussed out. Uh, a lot of threats. I've had rocks thrown at me. I've had my life threatened. I've been chased. It's been wild. We've had people urinate in the pavilion. I hear it over the radio. Brian, there's someone peeing in the pavilion. And it was a lady. She just took her pants off and squatted down in the pavilion. Yes. I couldn't believe it. I came around the corner and saw it. I just couldn't believe that was what was going on. And she was like, I'm not wearing a mask to use your bathroom. I'll go wherever I want. She did. She went right out of the pavilion. All the customers, kids were out to see it. Yeah, it was very embarrassing. Very embarrassing. Yeah, we had that happen twice this year. Just got body cams for that exact scenario. That way we can make sure everything is copacetic when if some scenario goes down that, that, that needs to be recorded or shown. Yeah, we try to share the, the history of the experience as well as the world. This is from an old simplex manual. And uh, that's from an old century projector parts manual. And these are all uh, nameplates and badges from, from old 35 millimeter uh, projection equipment. So the one way I have of holding on to the past. Yeah, we, I think I said 50 to 100 cars, didn't I? It, it, it's really hard to predict. But this is still way down for what we're used to. The 
just kind of run to the safe that are out of singles at the ticket office. Try not to slip from the stairs. Hop on the Segway and zoom out there. Back to singles. And I'm off. Okay. A lot of work. Good. Yeah, I know you're next. I'm how next. You doing? How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? So um, normal for a Sunday be even a little bit busier yet, but I'm I'm thankful for what we have here. Right now, because of what had happened with COVID, etc., we're we're limiting as to when we use it only when we have to, because now we have this new idea where we can sell teach our, our Benji driver memorabilia, rent radios, and in-car heaters when necessary. The people that will come behind me are, are with me now and hopefully would carry on. We realize Ken Adam will, will be here, has been here, 27 years. And that's Sean, get, can we, can we, can we just get the back of it. Uh, Sean, I think, is uh, over 12 or 12 between 12 and 15 and he met his wife here. I hire tall people to save me money on my He's one of them. Uh, so uh, I call them respectively my right and left arm. So theoretically, we should never have to use our for anything other than stuff that I do. Okay. driving me nuts tonight. Customers don't know how to turn off their lights. They don't know how to turn off their dome lights. When they open their dome lights, or I mean when they open their hatch, the dome lights come on. They can't get them to turn off. They don't know how to put their car in accessory mode. There needs to be a drive-in packet that's given to all new car owners. <laughs> Counting what we made today. Five dollars. The rest goes to the movie studios. We gotta love them. You know, I, I'm always afraid of trying something new and alienating customers. Um, my chat with customers tonight, they liked it, you know. Um, might not have been my style of music at the beginning, but uh, you know, uh, that band said they had 25 kids lined up to buy merch from them. You know, I I, I didn't see it. I don't I, I don't understand it. But you know, they were 
they were jumping up and down happy. Last Friday was holiday weekend, and we had brand new movies. So to be up, I'm pretty happy with that. Very happy with that. We should have been down about 25%, so maybe bringing the music in made a difference. It's just become a part of life and I've just kind of jumped into it and drive-in is in our conversation at home and here all the time. You know, I wonder what other drive-ins are doing. It's just a part of everything we do. We kind of think about the drive-in and you know, all these lights on here if someone had made these with the Harvest Moon logo on there for our lighting. Some of the short staffing issues can be a, a problem, and then there's the unruly customers. Um, we talked about like the policies with COVID that they didn't want to comply with and things like that. This season hasn't been too bad for that though, because our attendance has been down. Obviously there's the hope that it holds out for the future so she can be part of the business as she grows up and work here and then eventually own it. But in the same sense, I don't know the longevity of it anymore with everything going on. And I've seen more older owners trying to get out, especially this season, um, selling off whether to retire or, you know, just just done with the business. Because the way the market's been, it's such, it's not holding like it used to and what they were used to as the norm. So now it's all up in the air on whether you're gonna have a good season, bad season, or no season. good as it's gonna get. It's a flat movie which will be brighter. So let's go see what it looks like. It does look better from down there, but I am gonna wait just a little bit more. Let's see. Uh, 23, come on. Go ahead. How's it look down there? I'm up in the office. Received. I'll wait a little more. <laughs> so this is the augiest night I've had in probably three years. I can now say. So we're gonna wait a little while longer. Later than we had attended. That's all right. I'd rather have a better picture. National anthem is on the screen at 8:34. Part of the driving experience. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun when Perfect Storm plays though when it's like Chip, do you guys get like in the movie. You get any fog out there? No. Play fan? No? The ones in the blue moon we have that issue. I mean this is as bad we've had it probably in three years. Yeah. So what, three years? it's not a normal okay. I mean it, it's occasions for us to get some fog, but not not as bad as this. I love seeing yeah, the theaters. <laughs> yeah, Likewise. that's one of the best part of of being you know, a driving owner. It's the community. Yeah. Yeah, we are very close. Yeah, for We're sure. very tight knit. You know, we um, very open book to each other. Oh yeah. All at all times. Yeah. On all our calls, all our visits, convention, everything. And it's funny how it's so much similar. Like the business. You know, I was just talking to uh, some of your employees, and they were kind of describing some of the issues we're having. And it's like we're completely the other, side, you know, way down other south. Of, yeah, other yeah. side of the country, practically, having the same exact issues with it. So.
I'm here so much. I'm here between 40, 50 hours a week, sometimes more than that. So I love being with my family, basically. Everybody up here is my family. I'm at the love of my life here. We're going to have to drive in, too. So, yeah, I'm Coyote all the way. I love it. The money's not the best, but my job is the best. The stress of this place or just different things would run people off, but not for me. For me, I just love it. There's new challenges every day. Every, every day it seems like I learn something else here. I definitely learn something more about people every day. Everybody here kind of is. I call them my kids because <laughs> they are. Seems like I got to help take care of them. For sure. I do my best to look out for them too. I will not let I will not let them get cussed out by the customers and stuff like that. I'll definitely step in. De don't won't let them de get degraded. People are going to get upset about scenarios a little bit and speak to you negatively. And a little bit of that I'll take and let happen. But if they start cursing or just demeaning them in any way, I will. I'll stop that very quickly and definitely remove them from the drive-in theater. For sure. I've had to do that quite a bit for people cussing at 15-year-old kids and 16-year-old kids or making bad negative comments towards them or sexual comments towards them. We've had to remove them from the property. I'm actually in my 40s. So I've been to quite a few of the drive-ins. My mom will bring us, we'll pop our own popcorn to bring in our own outside food product to these drive-ins growing up. But yes, we would go to scary movies too. They would do like double features and the scarier movie would usually be the second movie. So I spent a lot of time growing up going to drive-in theaters here in Fort Worth and then some of the ones that were outside of Fort Worth too. So it's kind of in my blood a little bit, I guess. I still think about it when we're popping popcorn in there and putting the popcorn into the boxes. I got my mom doing it on the stove and these big poppers and then just pouring it into those paper bags. It was so, it just brings back so many memories too. I lost my mom this year and I do believe that without Coyote driving, I don't know where I would be. Like, they helped me really get through that. I spent a lot of time coming here. I didn't take any time off. I actually came here the day of the funeral too because this is my family and I spent more of my time here and I really needed that. It was a big loss in my life. She meant so much to me. And without the driving, I don't know where I would be. I really don't. I don't know where I would be. We got hit once by that wind shear hit it and Ooh. took out a quarter of the screen and tipped over my marquee completely over on the side once and I had to rebuild that. But some of that is because it was rotten, you know, and and it just needed to be rebuilt. When we bought it it was pretty much put to get kept held together with bailing wire. <laughs> but I put a lot of money in getting it to look good and be be strong and it is. It's in good shape. We have to get that screen painted about every four years because of the hail that hits it, you know, it chips it away. It's all wood covered in sheet metal. Yeah. Back in the day they would either blow down or burn down and then they'd put them back up with steel. Which is so impersonal. You know, it's just that's not attractive. That's not what a driving's all about. You know, the old the old the old timey look. Yeah, I would like to sell and pass it on to a younger family and let them have it for at least 20 years. But I don't know if that's going to happen because the land values are getting higher versus what the business is worth. But if you got in there and really marketed it, it would do better. Because when I bought it, it didn't do this kind of business. You know, a couple were older and they were wanting to retire. And so I marketed it because my kids were young and really worked hard, but now I'm where they are, were. <laughs> and I'm wanting somebody else to take it over. I was just here last night seeing Groundhog Day. So it's been twice for me this week. I love the open air. I, I just love the, the vibe in general. The first film I ever went to see on a big screen was at a drive-in, so they're very special to me. The, the Mission Tiki has an amazing concession stand. I can grab a taco and burrito uh, and watch, uh, watch a movie. I think it's the only place that I could do that, that I know of. It's like going back in time to see the drive-in, and once you're in here, a lot of the different uh, things that are going on now, especially the negative or stressful things, don't exist once you're in here. I think that uh, one of the positives that will come out of this whole situation is more people will go to drive-ins uh, that maybe hadn't gone before. 
it's common knowledge that we sold this property uh, to a developer who's going to build a, a tech-centric business park here. Uh, they, uh, they paid us a substantial amount of money, more money than we could make operating the drive-in theater in 25 years. Oh. Well, that's, yeah, that's a bummer. I guess I'll have to enjoy the time here as much as I can. <laughs> yeah. Oh. forgotten that they actually ordered them by the time we bring them out. So it's like somehow this is some big magical surprise, right? <laughs> you want to say yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we still have there's still dishes in there. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to get a dupe. <laughs> so yeah, I did save a few for tomorrow. So that's why we have some more evergreen ones. So at least if people really want a cookie, they can get our neon sign, which they like too. I should be getting better at like being able to calculate like okay if we have this many people for this sort of movie that this ephemeral I should know that it's like we're gonna sell this. I can't I can't do that kind of math. The big thing about tonight too is we had so many people it was our first time here, which uh, that always just excites me when it's someone's first time. So now we're starting to see some new faces. Tonight was the first night I saw a couple of our regulars for the first time in like two years combination of pandemic and babies and all sorts of stuff so it's nice when we see the next generation. Hey Lee. Hey, what? Um, we don't have any more of the infant onesies, right? Any more of the what? Infant onesies. Um, Just for Antonia. And oh, good call. Let me check. Do you have the key, Ben? Oh, okay. I thought it would really be fun to spend our retirement at a drive-in. I didn't realize that we would spend our retirements on a drive-in as well, but um, here we are. So. <laughs> it is really truly out of stubbornness and maybe stupidity, I don't know, um, <laughs> that we're standing here today and... I'm willing um, to try anything once, twice if it doesn't kill yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> my goal was to show my boys that if you have a dream, you can build it. and. Um, we've been talking about it so long even with our older kids and we just didn't want to be one of those people that it just became like Oh someday and it never happens and we just saw the opportunity and figured with both of our talents We really could make it happen. I don't think it's quite gone off as well as we had thought for these first two months You know, I mean weather and uh, the new movie release schedule, but we've made it work and you know I mean we um, try to keep a positive attitude. You know, there are a lot of things that that I kind of pig-headedly tried to do all on my own for a while. There's 11 acres of grass that need to be mowed every week. I've got a 54-inch riding lawnmower that was what we could fit in the Connex when we were buying that equipment. Um, I finally, I finally hired that out this last couple of weeks, and <laughs> <laughs> Sam comes on Tuesday to mow or Wednesday, depending on the weather. The biggest thing for us was meeting all the other owners. A few were standoffish at first, but most of them welcomed us with open arms. And they as soon were just as they so... found out where we were going to build. Yeah, as long as it wasn't next to them. Yeah. So, and I yeah. get it. I totally yeah. get it now. Uh, <laughs> Those are the only people I talk to anymore because I'm like, I know they're up. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it does that sometimes. Like, you'll just randomly get surprised. Like, usually Sundays are kind of laid back. Not like as many this. people. Yeah, definitely not like this. Yeah. Um, so this was kind of a surprise tonight. <laughs> if I see it needs to be done, I'll just hop in and help. Like, I was just down in box office helping get that line down a little bit ago. So it just, if I see it needs to be done, I just hop in and just, you know what, here we go. Let's just get this done. And everybody's like, oh, I hate doing popcorn. It's so hot right here. But that's what I started out doing. So, like, I still have a little, probably can't even see it now. But there's a little scar right across my pinky right here. Super busy one night. 
just dumping one kettle after another, putting more popcorn up under the heat lamps, and my hand had just gotten sweaty and everything, and I grabbed a hold of that uh, handle to dump it, and my hand just slid right into the kettle. And it was blistered. Hurts. As, huh? What hurts is when a kernel pops out of the kettle. And goes down and your shirt. It sticks. <laughs> Drop-ins have had to completely reinvent themselves time after time after time. And... I think we're going through a reinvention process now. Now, one thing that I have always done personally, and a lot of the older owners have always done, is we look back on history, what was done in 1962, when you know the first, very first color tip of televisions came along. How did we combat that? And you know, we used that in the 80s. You know, when HBF Cinemax, you know, the cable television came along. We used little tricks that were done back in the 60s, duplicated in the 80s. Well, some of that won't work today. We have to reinvent again. And because the pandemic was something nobody has ever seen before, that's never happened. We're having to kind of find our place and figure out where to go. Um, there's nothing to look back on in history and say, well, we can do this at work before. That doesn't exist. So we're gonna have to find our place and move forward from there. I don't think it's the end of the world by any means. I think drive vans have a bright future but we just had to find our place. Because it's been busy the last couple nights, because Friday and Saturdays, we've run out of strawberries. We ran out of nacho cheese tonight. Yeah, we need chips, cheese, strawberries. Maybe powdered sugar. I think we have two more cases of powdered sugar. A lot of people just get regular powdered sugar, but a lot of people want chocolate syrup, or they want the strawberry topping on their funnel cake and everything, so. Yeah, check the chocolate, too. Yeah, we might be low on chocolate. We have no intention of going anywhere. We're going to stay right where we are. Keep moving forward. It, I mean, this is not the first tragedy that's ever happened, and it won't be the last. I mean, we'll just deal with it. Tomorrow's another day. How good this will work being as how we don't have much reception out here without Wi-Fi but this is our current situation we got some water so we're just kind of out here waiting to see if it's receding which it has gone down already a few inches since we've been out here it was coming up rapidly before but it's going down now. We're happy to be here. We're still standing. We've survived so many years where we shouldn't have continued on that we're pretty confident we'll see the sunrise again and it'll be back to where we were. One in Chardon, I think it's called the Midway. <laughs> it was breathtaking. This is like the best form of entertainment as a kid. You know, it's memories that people will keep forever. And I seen all those people there were there for that reason, to create those memories. And I, it, <laughs> it's, sorry, I fell in love with it. So it changed my life. That 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 night, it was like an infusion in me too, to bring it back, to make it happen. You know. I didn't know how, how I was going to make it happen, but I knew I was going to. I know it's going to take a lot of money to do it. How do I, how? You know, I've been in the business of auto mechanics for, at the time, 15 years. And I just figured, well, if, if I own my own shop, then maybe, maybe I'll make enough money to be able to drive it. We came across the old Denniston drive-in. The Denniston closed in 1985. No. But when we found it, Thank you. it was it. We knew we were home. You know, it, it had closed, it had never, nothing had ever been built on it since. Mother Nature completely took the place over. You know, the fact that we were not only building something of history, we were building a part of history. That to us, which, this is Don by the way, 
that to us was the cherry on top. You know, we're, we're bringing back one that was, that all the locals have memories of going to. Peace. So <laughs> that's where we came up with the name Memory Lane Driving. <laughs> Everybody kept asking me, how are you going to build a drive-in? What do you know about that? I said, I, I don't know anything about it, but I'm going to figure it out. The kids that we see, the families that we see out here, the first time I see the kids playing on the playground, my, my back don't hurt no more, <laughs> you know? Like the, all the all the anguish and all the mental abuse that I took, and it's, all, it just pretty much just faded away. That That's why we wanted to build a drive-in, because we needed it. And as crazy as the world has gotten, we need to rewind the clock a little bit, you know? So this is our contribution. You know, it, it may not be um, inventing the internet or a cure for cancer, but this, this is what I got to bring to the world, hand on. And I think we're both damn proud of it. The tilt on the street. This, this place turned out really nice. It's gorgeous. Funnel cake is works real well for us. What what got it really going is this when the smell would would come through the drive and, and it would just attract people. We didn't Last year it was all retro movies and we did rather well with them because well, we were the only show in town. Uh, this year the releases by Hollywood are being done in, in, in conjunction with them also data streaming. So that kind of cuts the crowd a bit. Yeah, we we had a storm. Uh, Friday we did okay. You yeah, we did, did well on Friday. No sellout, but no. It, we did well. No. Uh, actually, Friday was the highest number to date, and to me, it's a low number. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm not alone. We're all no. in this together. Yes, you know. we are. You know, when things finally do settle down and, and everyone's pulled so, out of this, that uh, <laughs> you know, the industry, who knows if it'll go, if it'll go back to what it was two years ago. But we feel a little bit optimistic about that. If you take care of it, you keep it up, you know, people will come. Myself and my wife have owned it for 27, have worked it 55 years. It was always my dream to own a drive-in, so dreams do come true. I just hope that all theaters fight to, to keep their audiences and basically to survive. We, we need the theater business to uh, keep going. We got to all get in this together and, and fight. You know, it's it's just time for someone else to take the, the helm of it and, and go with it. And I just hope that they keep up the same standards.